In this video, I'm going to explain how you can determine if you're eligible and qualified to take the Principles and Practice of Engineering exam, also known as the PE exam. But before I do that, let me remind you that most successful engineers will tell you that getting their PE license was the biggest career growth driver that they've experienced, whether it was due to a promotion, a salary increase, or just more exciting projects to work on. You want to get your PE license. However, preparing for the PE exam can be a real challenge, but through this and other videos on this channel, you will learn everything you need to know about the licensing process, including PE exam preparation. So please be sure to subscribe to my channel here as my weekly videos will help you pass the PE exam. And if you leave questions in the comments below, I will answer them on future videos. In fact, this video was created in response to a comment on a previous video. Firstly, the Principles and Practice of Engineering exam, or PE exam, is administered by the National Council of Examiners for Engineering and Surveying, also referred to as NCES, or some people say NCES a national organization tasked with regulating the testing of engineers and surveyors. The PE exam is a standardized test administered nationally across the United States. Now, the state education boards in each U.S. state determine PE exam eligibility requirements, and as you may have guessed, they vary among each state. Each state licensing board has its own laws regarding engineering licensure. However, the good news is that there is a general three-step process that applies for most licensure candidates regardless of the state you reside in or where you plan to take the exam. Number one, education. Generally, engineering licensing boards require PE candidates to have an EAC ABET accredited bachelor's degree in engineering, engineering technology, or related science. Those initials stand for EAC is Engineering Accreditation Commission, and ABET is Accreditation Board for Engineering and Technology. The ABET accreditation provides assurance to the states that a college or university program meets the quality standards of the profession. It's kind of a way for there to be some consistency across the country in the concepts and topics being taught to engineering students. Again, it's important to you because most states require PE candidates to have an EAC ABET accredited bachelor's degree in engineering, engineering technology, or related science. Now, some states permit you to take the PE exam with an engineering technology, physics, math, or chemistry degree, or without any degree at all, providing you meet experience requirements. These requirements are nearly always greater for applicants without an accredited engineering degree. Check the requirements of your state licensing board. As I mentioned, each state licensing board has varying educational requirements. Number two, exams. Licensure candidates typically must pass two exams to achieve their professional engineering license. The Fundamentals of Engineering, or FE exam, and the Principles and Practice of Engineering, or the PE exam. An FE exam waiver may be considered in lieu of additional engineering experience. Now, just passing those two exams, which is no easy task, is not the only thing you need to do to get your license. You also need number three, experience. Most states require four years of acceptable, progressive, and verifiable work experience in the engineering industry. Engineering experience includes the following, engineering design, engineering calculations, planning for engineering works, preparation and review of engineering plans, preparation and review of engineering specifications, and engineering analysis. How much experience is needed? Well, that depends, of course, on your state board, but also the type of degree you have. Typically with an ABET accredited engineering degree, four years minimum of experience is required, whereas with other accepted degrees, eight years minimum of experience is required. Now, some states have decoupled the PE exam from the experience requirement. This means that you're able to sit for the PE exam before you have met the full experience requirement 
and submitted an application to your state board. However, you will still have to meet the experience requirement before you are able to get your license. Again, check your state board's website as many of them clearly list the requirements. To make this easier for you, I have included a link in the description to a webpage on the National Society of Professional Engineers website that provides links to all of the state licensing boards. In fact, the URL is nspe.org forward slash resources forward slash licensure forward slash licensing dash boards. There you have it. Now go check if you are eligible to take the PE exam. It's one of the most important things you will do in your engineering career. I hope you found this week's video helpful. In upcoming videos, I will solve some more PE exam practice problems and answer other questions from our subscribers. Past the PE exam videos will publish weekly, so please be sure to click the subscribe button so you don't miss something that could make a substantial difference in your exam result. And please ask questions and leave comments below this video and I will respond to you. And let me know if there's a specific topic that you'd like me to cover, or maybe a specific question that you need answered. Pass the PE exam will have you covered. As I mentioned before, this video was created in response to a question on a previous video. I'll see you next week on Pass the PE Exam.